Now, before we get to talking about the newest episode of Disney Gallery, which came out today and where we're taking behind the scenes and get to see a bit of the making of the season two finale of The Mandalorian, which is, of course, the famous Luke episode, there's a quick 30 second or so clip of Mark Hamill and Ryan Johnson that I want to play. One that I know you've probably seen before a time or two or ten, but that I think is worth visiting once again for reasons that'll become clear soon enough. When you make edgy, you know, bold decisions like you did in, in this movie, how worried are you that you might also piss off people? That are, Can I just say, though, a lot of times I would say to Ryan, we got to think about the fans. Yeah. And he said, no, we got to think about the story and we got to think about our movie, which I, you know... Uh, Okay, so though I don't really want to get into the same old arguments over Ryan Johnson and The Last Jedi, and you probably don't want me to do that again either, I do think it's worth noting that, perhaps rather unsurprisingly, a writer-director having an attitude that it's not about the fans, it's about his movie, ended up creating one of the most controversial pieces of Star Wars content ever, and probably the most controversial, let's be honest. One that, yes, some fans certainly do enjoy, while other fans certainly do not. In fact, some fans hated that film so much that they were done with Star Wars altogether after it, swearing to never again watch anything produced under the Disney banner, which, I mean, is probably about the last thing you ever want to hear one of your movies has done or accomplished if you're Lucasfilm and or Disney, to turn a fan or a customer not only away from your product, but to also turn them into someone who might even be out there actively opposing or attacking it. But anyway, then on the flip side, we have The Mandalorian and the people behind it, or who created it, one of which is the showrunner Jon Favreau, who, in this new episode of Disney Gallery, seemed to have a somewhat different take or attitude towards pretty much everything, including the fans. I think there's an interplay with storytellers and the people you're telling the story to. Does this look Jedi to you? I find that the emotions run very deep with Star Wars, and people's relationship, especially people who grew up with it from a young age, feel a lot of connection to it. I think the one consistent thing I'm feeling is that people care deeply that it's being handled correctly and that it's being handled respectfully. It meant so much to them and they want to see it continue into the future and feel like it's all connected with consistency. And I think the first thing worth pointing out here is that John Favreau, along with Dave Filoni, and certainly many, many others, both behind the scenes and in front of the camera, have created one of the most universally beloved pieces of Star Wars content since, well, since maybe the original trilogy. Though some might want to argue Clone Wars had very few detractors, but I'd say, though that's true, it also didn't have anywhere near the audience size that The Mandalorian does. Either way, Favreau and again Filoni and many others managed to pull this off with an attitude that can basically be summarized or boiled down to one of respect for both the fans and property itself. An attitude that is a stark contrast to Ryan Johnson's attitude towards it, or technically what Mark Hamill said of Johnson's attitude, though none of it would be refuted by Johnson afterwards. Anyway, of all the things Favreau said, either in that little clip I just showed or throughout the whole show, I think the most interesting has got to be what he said about there being a sort of interplay between storytellers and those they're telling the story to, or you could also say an interplay between the creators and the fans that there is this sort of back and forth between them, or maybe even a kind of mutual respect, you could say. I mean, one of the biggest misconceptions I often hear is that Star Wars fans want the story to go exactly how they want it to. They want to dictate things, and they'll get mad when a creator dare go against those wishes or do something unexpected. I always hear it said that those who hated The Last Jedi only hated it because Luke Skywalker wasn't exactly what they wanted him to be. He wasn't godlike. And though yes, a lot of fans did want and expect to see Luke Skywalker at the height of his power, they mainly just didn't want to see him lower than low, at rock bottom drinking warm green milk. Because for them, Luke Skywalker represented things like perseverance and loyalty, and an unwavering desire to do all he could for everyone around him, everyone he cared about, that was who and what he was to them. So if something actually had broken him, caused him to give up and turn his back on everyone he had ever cared about, well, something like that would have to be earned on screen by a very well-crafted story, not just shown in a single flashback where his first instinct was to strike down his nephew, and then he goes on to blame himself for everything, and then, of course, goes into exile. 
But anyway, no, it's not that fans want to control the story or dictate everything, or like they have a list of these are the do's and do nots when it comes to Star Wars, or like they don't want a twist or a surprise here and there, or for their expectations to be subverted from time to time. It's that what they want is consistency. They want things to make sense so that they can be fully immersed in this story and this fictional galaxy. And pretty much above all else, they just want those telling the stories to have as much respect for the source material as they do. Again, it's going back to this interplay, this mutual respect for each other. Because what has to be kept in mind is just how vested some fans are in Star Wars. And I'm not talking financially, though yes, some fans have some pretty big and expensive collections. Instead, I'm talking more on the personal or emotional level. I mean, in some cases, fans have been watching Star Wars, reading it, playing it, talking it, and so on for their whole life, which can be multiple decades at this point. And even those just getting into it now can quickly get swept up in all the lore and great stories it has to offer. They can quickly become hardcore fans themselves. And so, the last thing they ever want to hear is someone say, it's not about the fans. It's not about you or what you want. Instead, it's about me getting to tell my story with Star Wars. And as I've said many, many times before, I do think artistic freedom is absolutely an important thing. I don't hate Ryan Johnson for making a movie he wanted to make. I just don't like that he made a bad Star Wars movie. I mean, we got Star Wars in the first place because Alan Ladd Jr. believed in and fought for George Lucas and this crazy movie he was making called Star Wars. And I'd love to see the next Star Wars someday, the next big thing that takes the world by storm from just out of nowhere. I'm all for storytellers being able to tell the stories they want to tell, no matter what that might be or how they want to tell them. I'm all for new and unique experiences to take us to never-before-dreamed-of places. But if you want to do that, if you want to tell your story your way, then tap all your artistic freedom and tax your imagination to the fullest and create something entirely new. Don't jump into someone else's sandbox, tear everything they've built down, and then try to build something new out of the remains. And then don't be surprised when others don't like it and tell you to get out of the sandbox and to never come back. And don't get me wrong, I do get it that these creators can't just do whatever they want to do. Hollywood these days doesn't want to try anything new. They want guarantees instead of the risk that comes with the unknown, even though that unknown again could be the next Star Wars. Almost everything produced nowadays are sequels, remakes, shared universes, things based on books or comics or maybe old cartoons, or video games, or a TV series, or whatever else it might be, it feels like there is almost no place for anything completely original anymore. And personally, I do think the current state of things sucks. I for one am tired of things I grew up with being constantly recycled by those who really don't give a damn about what it once was, if they even know what it once was. They only want my money, and then they get mad at me when I reject their garbage. And no, I'm not saying that's how I feel about Star Wars right now, because there are people working on it or at Lucasfilm who do love and care about it, who actually want, perhaps above all else, to be creating Star Wars, who don't just maybe see it as a stepping stone to bigger and better things in their career, but instead see it as their sort of endgame or treat it like it's an honor to be working on it. Dave Filoni, for example, and I do not mean this as any type of insult, well, he seems to have no real ambitions beyond just creating great Star Wars that's loved and appreciated by fans. Which isn't to say he might not want to try something different one day, which, for what it's worth, he'd have my support in, as long as he keeps creating Star Wars. It's just that he seems genuinely happy and content to be working on Star Wars. I get the sense that he loves what he does and it shines through in his work. And whenever you hear him talk about Star Wars, you can just tell or feel how seriously he takes it, that he sees it as a responsibility to safeguard this creation of George Lucas's. Same basically goes for Jon Favreau. I mean, at one point in the show, he was talking about filming the final scene with Luke and said how he got emotional and teared up when R2 rolled in because he had always loved R2 when he was a kid, and he was even starting to tear up again just talking about it. And fans absolutely love to see and hear all this. They want to know that the people creating it care about it just as much as they do. That they're just as big as fans as they are. They just get the honor of making it. And you could just tell the reverence everyone involved in creating this episode of The Mandalorian. Again, the final episode of Season 2. You could tell the reverence they had for Luke Skywalker. You could tell how important it was for them to get absolutely everything right about it. That they wanted to honor everyone from the character to Mark Hamill who plays the character to all the fans who love both of them. They then even talked about the lengths they went to and the hopes they had about keeping it all a secret until the episode finally dropped. 
They wanted people to experience it in the moment, not have it ruined online by someone who leaked it. And it was cool to hear how Favreau was sending online fan reactions to Mark Hamill, and how you could tell it impacted Mark Hamill to know that grown men were literally brought to tears over his return. Which I think touches on something we sometimes forget about, which is how much Luke Skywalker means to Mark Hamill, and how much Luke bringing everything from joy to inspiration to the fans across the world also means to him. And I couldn't help but notice that the one thing that really wasn't talked about pretty much at all in the show is what Luke would end up becoming like in the sequel trilogy. And though I don't want to delve too deep into the retconning of the sequel thing again and what the Mandalorian could be leading to in the end, I think it is interesting to point out how much they talked about how good the technology is becoming. The technology to deep fake or de-age someone. That in a few years from now, it will be nearly perfected. They even have new technology to duplicate voices. In other words, I think we'll be getting a lot more younger Luke Skywalker in the near future. And who knows where that might lead. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you thought of this latest episode of Disney Gallery, or to touch on anything and everything else I had to say in the video. Either way, do leave a comment below, and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.